Hello and welcome back to the Across the Pod podcast. It's time for another team season preview and this time it's a turn of the Denver Broncos. Now with me, I've got a returning guest who was on for last year's Broncos season preview. Back with us again is Talk Sports' Tony Afoki. How are you, mate? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. And yeah, I'm, I'm actually excited for the Broncos season. Oh, really? Um, so after last year, a lot of hype last year. I thought a lot of Broncos fans maybe would be a bit pessimistic about not getting hopes up too much after what happened last season. Oh, yeah, 100%. We had an awful season. It The season didn't go to plan. But I feel like we know why. And I feel like there's some positives you take from that season. And we can try to turn them around with a new coach, new owners, fresh start. This is like a, a clean slate, basically, for Broncos fans. And I'm excited. Yeah, certainly as a change, of course, that is one of the main ins and outs of the off-season. Of course, Nathaniel Hackett was head coach last year. He also lost his job before the season, season even ended. And coming in this place with Sean Payton, of course, well-known head coach, won a Super Bowl with the Saints and was there for a lot of years and brought a lot of success. The main sort of ins, other ins, include the likes of you know, Marcus Calloway, Frank Clark from the Chiefs, which is massive. Um, Mike McGlinch, the defensive tackle. Um, other players like Jared Stitham, um, and then main outs include Graham Glasgow, Brandon McManus, Chase Edmonds, um, and Demar Jackson. Not the Demar Jackson, of course, but that's really where it ends. Not really unless I completely miss someone. Not too many more big ins and outs. So overall, for you, Tony, your thoughts on the Broncos off season as a whole? Um, I feel like we've had a decent off season. I feel like. Watching the Broncos last season, and I think all Broncos fans knew what we needed. We first needed a head coach. We got that. That was the first on the agenda with Sean Payton. We then needed to sort out that O-line. And we got that. We added uh, McClinchy. We added Ben Powers as well. So we kind of sorted out our O-line going into the season because Russell Westbrook was the most hit QB last season. And we didn't protect him. And he wasn't the greatest of quarterbacks. We can talk about last season. But at the end of the day, we didn't protect him as well. So we sorted that out. And I'm looking at our uh, free agency. We didn't have a massive free agency. We, we we got our two offensive linemen and a, a little Frank Clark was nice. That was, it was random. It completely happened under the radar. We signed him on a one-year deal and I was just like, okay, cool. Helps, helps the pass rush. I'm totally fine with that. And I'm kind of happy because I feel like we've addressed our needs. I feel like we've got a, we've gotten to become a better team. We, we Everyone knows about the Broncos' defence, right? The whole narrative of last season was the Broncos have a good defence. Once they have a quarterback, they'll be a good team. And then that obviously didn't go well with last season and Nathaniel Hackett and everything. But going through that free agency, I'm quite happy with all with what we've added. And I'm looking forward, as I said, I've, as I've been saying like many times, I've been looking forward to the Broncos season. I'm even looking forward to preseason, which I know we've got the Cardinals on like Saturday. I'm even looking forward to that just to see how we will line up. And I know obviously preseason isn't, doesn't relate to the regular season, but I'm just excited to watch Broncos football again, to be fair. So I think definitely draws mixed people's opinions about pre-season, about whether some people do, some people don't watch pre-season. So I'm taking from that, you're saying that you will watch Broncos pre-season games? Um, yeah, I'll watch two. I'll watch two. I think the last pre-season game against the Rams and then the first one against the Cardinals. I'm watching the first one against Cardinals because I just missed the Broncos. And then I'll watch the last one because it's the last one before the regular season and Sean Payton did say a lot of the first he said a lot of the first string will play so I'm not sure how much they'll play but at least we'll see them so we'll kind of see like whether it's a drive and this new offense or whatever I'll take it because I need to see what I'm um me- giving my- leading myself up to and gearing myself up for for the season I need to see it first now before I start to get my hopes up or not and of course one player you will want to watch as well as the likes of draft picks such as Marvin Mims second round Linebacker Drew Sanders in the third round, um, also Riley Moss in the third round, cornerback amongst two others, as well as, of course, Russell Wilson, which is where we're going to talk about now because he was obviously the big talking point last season. His trade from the Seahawks is wide and didn't have a first round overall pick this year. Um, came in a lot of money spent on him, a lot of capital spent on him, and it didn't work out. And obviously, Hackett lost his job as a result, um, and Peyton's come in with the assumption of brought him in to win him games and to help Wilson get back to his best. But this season for you, how big is it for Wilson? Because he hasn't got the excuse of Hackett anymore. He's got a well-known renowned coach in Sean Payton, someone who turned Drew Brees into a, a normal player to a Super Bowl champion and one of the best to ever do it. So for Wilson, just how big is it? Because Payton didn't draft him. That's a big thing. He didn't draft him. Payton could, after a year, just completely just get shot of him. So for you, 
just how big is a season for Russell Wilson to try and get his um, credibility back as an NFL quarterback? It's massive. I, I, I kind of feel sorry for him in a sense that his credibility as an NFL quarterback is kind of missed because before like his before his last season at the Seahawks, the season before that, he was top two in the NFL 100. Like Russell Wilson was a good quarterback. And I, I think a lot of people that didn't watch the Broncos or just saw the Broncos' losses for and win record for face value is that our season, we went into that season, we realised from game one against the Seahawks that our head coach doesn't know about game management and can't call plays. That We found that out from week one. So I feel like for anyone, the quarterback position is so hard. If you don't have a really good relationship with your head coach, it can go wrong and it can make it can not make you look good. Now, I'm not defending Russell completely because there were some throws which were just, that was on him and he should he should do better. But I'm... Um, I don't. I'm yet to believe that he's just like lost it and he's just not a good quarterback anymore. Like this guy has won a Super Bowl. He won a Super Bowl against us. Like he's a Super Bowl champion. He could do it before and he can still make some big throws. It's just I'm just happy now that he has a good coach. Now that he has an offensive minded coach and as someone that can work with him and someone that's done, done it before. Because Nathaniel Hackett came into this roles of the Broncos as a rookie. Like he was, he was a rookie head coach, and I know he's an offensive, offensive coordinator, and he was with Green Bay Packers. But that's offensive coordinator to head coach is a big step. And one thing we realized is that the guy can't call plays. We even had to get someone in to call plays for him at the end. So I feel like now with a good coach, I feel like Russell Wilson. We're going to see the best out of Russell Wilson. We've, do you know what it is? I don't know because we uh, got Jarrett Stidham as a backup, so we know that's that's kind of like an inkling to like Russell. Okay, if you want to mess up. Jack Sillum's here and he can take us to the end of the season and then we start thinking about the quarterback position. So we've got that sorted. So Russell Wilson knows that this is a make or break season for him. But what we've done as a franchise is we've kind of protected him. We've sorted out our O-line. We've got him a good offensive coach. So now, if it's on you and he still sucks, that's on Russell Wilson and there's nothing we can do about it. But for last season, we're like, okay, the head coach isn't great. Russell Wilson is kind of like on and off. That's like a new offense. There were so many things that you can be like, okay, this isn't Russ's fault completely. But now if he, if he messes up again, this is his fault. But I don't know. I felt like once Nathaniel Hackett got, Nathaniel Hackett got um, sacked, or got, got fired, sorry, after we were a pretty decent team, we barely lost to the Chiefs on a BS offensive PI. And then we beat the Chargers. I think we were two and one when we actually had an interim head coach. Now I'm looking at that and thinking, if that's an interim head coach, imagine what a good head coach in Sean Payton could do with Russell. So I'm quite optimistic. I'm, I don't think he's as bad as everyone thinks. I feel like everyone just watch us have so many prime time games. And then for the people that actually don't watch the Denver Broncos, it's like, what the hell is this? And Broncos fans were saying that too. We were watching them and saying, what the hell is this? So I think we will do much better with a good head coach and Russell Wilson. I think like we'll get back to a Russell Wilson we've seen before. I think for me, it's a bit like what we're going to get to Aaron Rodgers this year is the fact that I think we'll know this season whether Rodgers played bad last year because of um, his age or whether it's because of being unhappy in Green Bay. Maybe there's something going on there with the floor. And I think the same thing applies to Wilson. I think we'll know this year whether last year was Wilson on the climb or last year was probably down to Hackett. And I think that I can't see it getting worse. I mean, it can't get any better. Um, and you mentioned about watching Broncos games. I was had the I say the point the misfortune of going to the Broncos Colts game, uh, which was <laughs> by far the worst game I've ever been to in any sport. Oh no, <laughs> um, so bad. It was Thursday night, wasn't it? That yeah. was a Thursday night. Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was good in a way because I got I got I managed to get obviously work with Channel Five out there. So I did some presenting for Channel Five, so. The game, in a way, means something to me because I managed to get a fairly good opportunity there. But the game itself was terrible. And it went to overtime and the fans, no one there wanted it. It was really worth that kind of game where we always wanted to get home. No one wanted to go on an extra 15 minutes. Yeah. But, um, and, yeah, watching you guys in Tennessee as well, a better performance then. But, you know, either way, it was still a poor performance. But one thing you can take from these Broncos games last season is that I think there were seven games that you lost by uh, more than by seven points or less. I'm just going to get the figures up now. So looking at your your results. So week one, you lost by a point. Week two, you lost by seven points. One point in week three. So you won by one point in week three. Other losses, um, you lost by okay, you lost by nine there. But you lost by three points in week four. So week five, you lost by three points in week six. Um, lost by only about seven points in week seven and going further down the table. I mean, you mentioned the results being better when 
Um, Hackett wasn't there, and he won 31-28 against Chargers. He lost by three points against the eventual champions, the Chiefs. And looking at the in general, the fixtures, there's not really any massive blowouts really in this game. So there has to give you some sort of positive and some sort of um, encouragement for the season, the fact that if you can win, so I lose all these games by such close scores, and then you're coming in, you're adding Lyson McGlinchke, and you've got someone like Sean Payton in, you got to think your turn has lost into wins, right? Yeah, 100%. I feel like a lot of Broncos fans realised that it was first, and this happened obviously last season, but this has been happening for a while now. We have such a good defence that our defence can keep us into games. And so two seasons ago, it was, okay, we have a good defence, but we don't have a good quarterback. This is why we're only losing by like one possession games or less than 10 points. Then last season was like, okay, we need a good quarterback and we need a head coach. If they work together, then we'll start winning these games because we're only losing to good teams by like one. I mean, only losing just like by one point. I think a good quarterback can, not one point, sorry, by one score. So I think a quarterback could help out. We had the quarterback, but then we didn't have the head coach because we realised this guy can't call plays. So now I'm thinking, okay, now we've got the head coach. Now we still have the quarterback and we still have this good defence. Like we should be able to turn these losses into wins because, and a lot of those games was a bit self-sabotage as well with the Broncos. Like we we just found ways to lose games. And now with what Hackett said, I mean, sorry, with what um, Sean Payton said that we're going to literally do the opposite of everything that Hack it done. That's exactly what we want because we saw from week one. I remember literally uh, watching the MNF with um, Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, and Shannon Sharp. And we literally, we were uh, third and 14, made it quite close to four and five. And actually, you know, four and five, we're saying, okay, cool, timeout, 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 timeout. I remember I was literally watching that game live. I had a flight to IB for in like a couple hours. So I was like, all right, let's just watch this and then go. And I was just like, timeout, timeout, timeout. And then we decided to kick what a 62 yard field goal. I know Brandon McManus is his record 61, but it, it just made no sense. That just showed like lack of game management and, and not a good coach. A good coach doesn't do that in that situation. So I honestly look at this team now and I feel like, okay, we've improved our needs. We've got the head coach. We should be a good team. Like I know life doesn't work like that, but we've ticked off all the boxes we need to tick off. So that's why I'm, I'm actually quite optimistic for this season. Yeah, I think certainly um, the red flags were there when if the crowd's doing the the clock sort of management for you and they're counting down, oh, yeah. oh, oh. that was really, that was sort of a bit like the beginning of the end. And I think there were similar things with Urban Meyer. There was really big red flags early on and it would have happened there. And of course, um, Sean Payton came out and said recently that Hacker had the um, the worst coaching job in the history of the NFL. I think that Myers probably is worse. I think he got that slightly wrong. But Rogers sort of came out and defended Hackett and said he, he should keep his words out of his mouth, basically trying to quote Will Smith. Um, but what was your take on that? Is there any sort of does that give you any sort of concern, the fact that he is being so critical of Hackett, or do you think it's just the kind of guy he is and it doesn't really matter that he said that? Or was there any sort of concern for you about that, those comments? I like it because what I saw last year as a Broncos fan was atrocious. I think that was, we scored less than 16 points per game. I think that was like the worst, we had the worst offense ever in like NFL history or something stupid like that. So the fact that we're doing the complete opposite, that's what Broncos fans want to hear. And we've got a season guy, we've got someone that's done it before. I'm like, okay, cool. Now, really and truly, even if he's not the same Sean Payton we saw back in 2007 or whatever, whatever year they won the, uh, no, it wasn't 07. 09. Yeah, they, Oh, nine, sorry. There we go. Yeah, because Patriots was 07. Um, yeah, so the fact that we've got Sean Payton there and we've got someone experienced, I'm thinking, okay, now it shouldn't go wrong. And it's an experienced guy coming to a job that was led by an inexperienced guy and saying, all this is wrong. Like, I don't mind that because it's probably true at the end of the day. And so I'm 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 excited. I'm excited because I want to literally see the opposite of everything Nathaniel Hackett's doing. And it's no disrespect to Nathaniel Hackett. Like he's just not a good head coach. He never was a head coach. And hence why he's gone back to being an offensive coordinator. There's just some people that can't make that jump from coordinator to coach. And there's nothing wrong with that. Vance Joseph was our head coach for a couple of years. And we had some decent moments under Vance Joseph, uh, Vance Joseph, but he just wasn't that guy of a head coach. And now he's come back as our defensive coordinator. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's just some people that can't make that jump. But now we have an established head coach. I'm thinking, okay, all of our um, needs are ticked. It should be okay now. It should be. But, you know, easier said than done, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, um, I remember for us, it was years where, like, last few years, 
where and the Flores especially, it was a case where our offense was struggling and our defense was doing amazingly. And then this last season, McDaniel came in, our offense just obviously because Tyree Kill became miles better, but our defense weighing down and would regress mm. massively. So I think there's a lot of um it's really hard to get the balance right both and even looking at your stats from last year, I mean points allowed per game, you were in the in the top eight, sort of the top eight least amount of yards allowed given up. And then in terms of offense, you had the one of the bottom seven worst offenses for yards gained uh, per t- per game or something like that. So it's it's really hard to get both right. I think there's a lot of teams in the NFL that it is really hard. I don't think many teams actually have both those perfect. I think even the Chiefs, I don't think their defense is elite, but I think often their offense is, and I think there's other teams that vice mm-hmm. versa. But yeah, I, I think the Broncos, obviously, NFC-wise, I think you'd be even more confident, but I think the AFC is going to be hard. Which, speaking of which, goes to our final segment, which is going to be our win-loss tie segment. Now, of course, last year we had Tony on. Um, so the Broncos' record last season was 5-12. and 12. Now, Tony, you gave your prediction last season. <laughs> oh, like 10-3, and three, <laughs> wasn't it? I was saying that. <laughs> even worse, 12-5. and five. <laughs> Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Other way around. Yeah, exactly. It's funny because we had a Seahawks fan on Javan, um, our first episode of the series, and he had the complete opposite around. So he had the Seahawks with just five wins, and they also made the playoffs with, I believe it was nine and ten wins. So, yeah, it's funny how the NFL is because there'll be teams this year that don't make the playoffs that were in the playoffs last year. And I think we could even see, you know, it takes one injury and the team could do badly. And I think no one expected yeah. Geno Smith to become the callback he did. No one expected Wilson Wilson to decline. So, it's why we love the sport. It's why we love it because every year the whole landscape, apart from a few teams, both top and bottom, the landscape changes every year. And you know, I guarantee there'll be loads of teams that don't make the playoffs this year that were in the playoffs last year. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. I think the Broncos, you have to be hope that it's um, the year where you finally reach the playoffs for the first time since you won the Super Bowl. So that's um, something you'll want to try and a drought you'll try and want to end this year, um, which starts off in week one at home to the Las Vegas Raiders. Win, loss or tie? Win. We're at home. We never we, we always just mess up with the Raiders, but win. And again to me, you're probably getting one of the worst teams this season. So um yeah, nice little starter for you. And a week two, you're at home again, uh, but this time against the uh, Washington Commanders. Yeah, that's a win. That's a W. Okay, now week three, be careful what you say here, but it's a um, road game against the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because it's in Miami, and I'm gonna be try. I'm gonna try to be as realistic this year. I'm gonna take that as an L, but I expect as a Broncos fan, I do expect to win that game. But I'm gonna be realistic and say L. All right, it's a correct answer. Thank you. You're through to the rest of the round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, week four on the road again, but this time at Soldier Field against the Chicago Bears. Oh, that's a win. Hey, yeah, I like that. Um, week five is you back at home, and this time it's against Aaron Rodgers. And the New York Jets, which of course will um, be an exciting derby. Of course, Hackett returning to Denver. Rogers, obviously, the whole hack, the Peyton comments and all that. It's going to be spicy week five. Yeah, that's a. I think because we're at home, I think we're going to have that advantage. So I'd say that's a win. But now we're four and one, and I'm thinking. Oh. <laughs> anyway, we're four and one. We, we 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 keep going. We keep going. Well, it won't be four and one for long because you've got the Chiefs at Arrowhead in week six. Uh, that's a loss. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say it's is it something like 18 straight games you've not beaten the Chiefs or something like that. Yeah, we haven't beaten Patrick Mahomes ever. Ever. No, um, yeah, we've never beaten him. We'll do it at some point, but I just don't see it being in week six, personally. I don't know, it'll be in week eight. I think we've got in week eight. Oh, um, yes, you do. Yeah, that's, um, that's, there's quite a few teams we've done so far that have these games really close to each other. A lot of the part we've had, they got like week seven and week nine, or they got 12 and 14, or I think last season even you had 13, and the Giants and Commanders are playing back to back weeks. So, um, mm. the NFL seems to do a lot more tighter schedules than normal. I don't know whether it's just a recent trend or whether I've just not noticed it before, but um, what was it going to that week before week seven, week eight? Um, the other game against the Chiefs, do you think you win that one, or do you think it's another L? I feel like this year is the year we break the duck. I think this year it'll be at mile high and we'll beat them for the first time. I feel like we got them because last two year, last two years at mile high, Patrick Mahomes threw three picks and we only lost by one possession. And 
and that arrowhead, we should have beaten them. Should have beaten them. Well, the PI call, we're not going to talk about that. But yeah, we should have beaten them at arrowhead. So I, I think we've got something for Patrick Mahomes this year. And just a split. I don't mind losing at arrowhead. But yeah, at, at mile high, if we're all healthy, and it's a healthy Broncos, yeah, I'm taking that. Speaking of Mahomes, actually, whilst we're on this topic, have you got a chance to watch the um, Netflix series yet with Mahomes? Yeah, yeah, quarterback, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on it, on the series? I loved it. Like, as much as I love Patrick Mahomes, I do have to hate him because he's the quarterback of the Chiefs. But I loved it. I've, I've even got a love for Kirk Cousins that I never thought I would have. Like, I feel like Kirk Cousins is just a cool guy. And I love Marcus Mario as well because he was the person, his year when he, was, when he came out of Oregon, that was the year I kind of got into college football as well. I remember watching um, that playoff against Jameis and then he won it, I think, in like 2014. And then Jameis went first and Marriott went second. And that's, I even have an Oregon bucket hat somewhere. Like that's how much I got into into college football with Marcus Mariota. But then like, so all those quarterbacks were really good to watch and I really loved it, fully enjoyed it. So does that mean you're an Oregon fan when it comes to college football? Um, I feel like I am a fan. Like I do watch... Um, the playoffs. I do watch college football playoff, and the only thing is though is that I don't. I'm not set on one team. If I had to say I support one team, maybe UCF because I remember one year I was. You remember UC, uh, one year UCF had that un, undefeated season, and they didn't go. Actually, to the... No, I've only really got college football the last I'd say three years. If I'm honest, um, yeah. I forgot what year it was, but UCF had an undefeated season. They went 13 0 but they didn't get. Um, the call up to the playoff and that was like a whole thing but I remember when I was out in downtown Orlando and I met some of them and and like we had a good time so that's why I'm like I low-key support UCF but at the same time yeah if I had to pick a college it would be UCF but I, like I, I just watched the college um, playoff because it's just nice to see like who's going to go up in the draft stuff or stuff like that and who's good who's not blah 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 and watching the prospects so yeah I'm, I'm quite into college football yeah I do like it but I think my issue, my issue sometimes is that because not all the only like was it only three percent of players make the NFL. I find yeah. most times it tends to be a blowout, and I sort of if I'm if I'm looking at it, it turns like forty five seven. I'm like, am I going to watch this? Probably not. If it was the NFL, maybe, but I don't think I'd I don't think I'd watch it unless it was like a big game. But even then, I watched the national championship. Was it this year or last year when it was like sixty one to something, and it was just like yeah, yeah very yeah. unwatchable. I, I I prefer when it's like I much prefer it to be like. I would say the Super Bowl with the Patriots and Rams. I think that's a better Super Bowl than some ones we've seen where it's been like the old days, like the Niners against was the Niners against the Broncos, where it was like fifty-one to something. I think I'd much rather it be a low-scoring, tight affair than being a yeah. twenty-point difference. Unless it's like something like sixty to forty-five, I'll take that. But yeah, it's um, but it, it going on to the callback thing. I really enjoyed it. Um, I like you as Kirk Cousins. I I really felt like even though I liked him already, I felt like I got a lot of love for him. But my only issue with the program, because as much I enjoyed the program, it was a bit too Mahomes heavy. I know he obviously he's the best callback in the league, and I know he obviously in later on in the episodes he obviously made the Super Bowl. But I think in the early ones especially, it was I would say it was like two thirds with Don Mahomes, which you know, it was fair enough. I do understand why, but I think. I feel sorry for Mario for a little bit, but I suppose it is the nature of the game. Mario was a backup for the final part of the season and Cousins mm. you know, made one playoff game. So I, th- I think that one thing I'd like to see next time, even if it's, say, rumours are Burrow's going to do it, say if it's, I don't know, Burrow, I think Burrow, Taylor Hyde. I would love, and... I would love Wilson to do it. I feel like it's a, like not, not even just a Broncos standpoint, but I feel like the narrative of Wilson's good, new head coach, a quarterback that's done it before, a team and a city that's expectant. Like, I feel like it's, it's a pretty sold it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Wilson could be a shout. But that's, I'm not, obviously, it's not me and my Broncos bias, but I feel like that could be a shout. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would mind that. But I think whatever it is, no matter what their state is, I want to see a bit more of an even spread in the early stages because I did find there was a lot of Mahomes and it was a bit like, mm. come on, let's go. I want to see more of Cousins here. I want to see more of America. But either way, I still enjoyed it. And Peyton Manning, Seeming he's got a good career in directing. He did the Peyton's Places, which is really good. Yeah. And then he's done this now. I think that probably is and also the the Manning show with his brother. And I think that's I think he's got a good career in TV lined up, even this behind the scenes stuff. I think he's got a good post NFL career right there. Um well, in between the Chiefs game show, we got a week seven home game against the Packers. Oh yeah, we should win that. Yeah. I think at that point it's like, you know, Jordan Love, I think. 
he's only had one start, one real start so far. So I think it's, I think we'll know by week seven who who he is, and I think that'll be. But I think it's a good time to play in week seven because he may still, even at that point, be you know finding his groove. So I, I think it's um, a good year, to, good year to play him. I think even Rogers had a six win season in his first year as a starter. So I think that if there's one year to play the Packers, it's going to be this year. I think so. Um, yeah. I I could see that. Um, right after the Chiefs game is a bye week in week nine, so week ten is a road game against the Buffalo Bills. Uh yeah, we'll lose that. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully you win it. I hope for my sake, but um, yeah, mm-hmm. I I can't see Bills losing that. If I'm honest. Uh, speaking of Kirk Cousins, uh, week eleven you face a home game against the Vikings. Uh, because I'm going to be realistic, I'm going to say we'll lose that one. Because I just need some more L's because I don't think we're going to be like 12 and 5. I think we'll be like a 10 win, maybe 11 win team, but not 12 and 5. Um, so then week um, 12 is a home game again against the Cleveland Browns and everyone's favourite quarterback, Deshaun Watson. <laughs> I, ooh, home. No, I'm going to be real, realism again. I need some more L's because I feel like we'll win other games. Actually, no, I'll win, win, win. Hey, that means at the moment, with it being week 12, you've currently got a seven and four record. So, oh, um, yeah, that's not bad. It's, yeah. it's manageable, it's feasible. That's, I think, you ask any, any, most teams, you say, apart from maybe Chiefs fans and uh, maybe Bengals fans, if you tell you, oh, you, you'd be seven and four after week 12, you, you'll take that. So, I think it's, um, mm. yeah. Strong start. Uh, and then week 13 is a road game against the Houston Texans. Oh, yeah, we'll win. Yeah, I can see that. I think they'll improve, but I don't think it'll be that quick. I think they'll need a year or two just to um to really get used to TJ Stroud and Will Anderson. I think Will Anderson will be defensive rookie of the year, but I think it'll take, I think, the Mika Ryans being a first-year head coach Take them along. Not many rookie head coaches make the playoffs, so I think it'll be a year of rebuild. Mm. But then again, it's a very poor division. You know, the Jags will probably win it, but then, you know, Lawrence goes down. I think it's up for grabs there because you've got another rookie quarterback in Richardson. And then with the uh, Titans, I think the quarterback situation there is terrible. And Hopkins is, is at a certain age now, and Henry might request a trade. So I think certainly if the Jags struggle, I think the Texans could surprise everyone to take that spot, but I think otherwise they will be a team in rebuild. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I feel like that's an easy win for us in Houston <laughs> yeah. as well. Maybe we just wanted the whole season. Um, week 14 is another road game. This time we travel to LA to face the Chargers. Uh, being realistic, yeah, we'll lose that one. Fair enough. Um, week 15 uh, is a road game against the Detroit Lions. Uh, yeah, we'll win. We'll win. Yeah, that means that's your ninth win in the books for for week um sixteen game at home to the New England Patriots. Yeah, we'll win. And then week seventeen is again against the Chargers, but this time at home. We will lose that because we will be resting Russell Wilson for the playoff game. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm going with that. We'll lose that because we'll be resting. Jarrett Stillman will start and we'll be resting Russell Wilson for our playoff game. Okay. Finally, week 18, um, which might be my birthday, um, which I'm very excited for, week 18. Uh, um, is at the road, on the road to the Las Vegas Raiders? Yeah, I'm definitely losing that one too. We'll be resting. So that means that you're finishing the season with 10-7 and 7 record. That's, that's realistic for... Up the yeah, I'll be more realistic this season. Ten and seven. If someone, I'll take ten and seven. If someone said you can have a ten and seven record. I'll take that. Absolutely. Maybe a cheeky wild card. Yeah, because that's the thing. So you, you'd think even in the AFC, ten and seven would. I don't think in the certainly the AFC West will get you above the Chiefs, uh, but I think that may just be enough to get you in the playoffs. It's a very good, very good conference. Tees may can by themselves, but you would think ten and seven would most years get you in. So you make the wild card round. It's a little bonus prediction. How far are you getting in the playoffs? Divisional. <laughs> Divisional. Hey, that means you're going to win the um the wild card round game then. Yeah, yeah, we'll win the wild card round game and then we'll lose in the divisional. 
Okay, so that means, go back to other, other people's predictions, at time of recording, you are our um, 13th guest, or our 13th team, uh, it's our 12th team so far, um, and you are currently tied for our 8th most optimistic fan. It's not bad. No, I mean, you've got two depressed Cardinals fans right at the bottom, uh, but you're ahead of <laughs> the Panthers, and you've got um, Tom Morton, our Giants fan, and Jay Lawrence, our Saints fan, both on 10 and, ten and 7. So, um, yeah, that's all. Yeah, that seems about right. I mean, you've got 49ers fans above you, Bills fans, Bengals fans, uh, you see, even Seahawks and Browns fans ahead of you. But I think 10 and 7, for me personally, I think that's fairly fairly accurate. And I think that's probably is. I think, I think personally, you will make the playoffs or just miss out. I think it'll be 8th seed or 7th or 6th seed. But I think that... Yeah, I think it's time to be exciting. And I think that Peyton certainly won't take any mess in. And I think that is, he's going to certainly improve your offence. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree 100%. Big stuff. And that's where we'll end this podcast. So that has been the Broncos season preview. So thank you, Tony, for coming on. Thank you for having me. It was a great. One. Let's go. <laughs> Broncos country, let's ride one more time. Had to get that island somewhere. Um, if you are a Manchester United fan, Tony is coming on for the Euro Trips podcast for the Man U season preview. So, not sure which one's coming out first, but if you have, if that is out when this one comes out, then do check that one out, or vice versa. So that has been the Across the Pod podcast. I've been Andy. This has been Tony, and we will see you guys for our next season preview, which is going to be the New York Jets. See you then.